This is Algebra 2 with Trig. We're working on our second day of review. We're doing what's called an extra practice. This is for the 5B, 5C quiz. So we're going to look at graphing this out. I notice this is a square root. So one way we've been making a table for this is using the numbers 0, 1, 4, 9, and maybe even 16. Now, we could do y equals square root of x. If you want to break this table up into three rows, we can do square root of x, because the square root of 0, the square root of 1, the square root of 4, square root of 9, and square root of 16. Then we would do negative 3 square root x. We'll do the a times our function. So a times each one of these a times 0. The a value is negative 3 times 1, negative 3 times 2, negative 3 times 3, negative 3 times 4. We're going to graph that, then we'll worry about the translation. So when x is 0, we're at 0. When x is 1, we're at negative 3. x is 4, we're at negative 6. x is 9, we're at 9. And x is 16, that would be out here, would be down at 12. That is the graph y equals negative 3 root x. Now we're going to do our translation. We see that our h value is a positive 4, and our k value is a positive 2. I know this is x minus 4, but really it's going to be y equals a square root of x minus h plus k. Since it's saying the opposite, then we want to use the opposite. So we're going to move 4 to the right and up 2. for every point. And with that in mind, we can graph it. And that's the graph. Y equals negative 3, square root of x minus 4 plus 2. In our comparison, we are going to have a reflection over the x-axis. We're going to have a vertical stretch by factor of 3. and translated for right and two up. Our domain, we're doing the domain of the orange, the final graph. So that is going from our x value, really our h value, it's greater than or equal to four because it's to the right of x is 4. All those spots are x's or 4's are bigger. Our y values are all going down because it's reflected over the x-axis. It's going to be y is less than or equal to. The largest y value was 2. The rest of the y values are all less than 2. 
the interval notation, if that mattered to you. The largest value goes second. So you've got to put your smaller value, which is negative infinity, then you put your largest value, which is 2. So this time we're going to do y equals the cube root of x. And if we're doing a cube root graph, we're going to use the numbers negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8, because of those you can take the cube root of. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Then we're going to multiply these by 3. So our a value is 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, negative 3, 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 1, 3 times 2, and that I can graph. At negative 8, I'm down at negative 6, at negative 1, I'm down at negative 3, 0, I'm at 0, 1, I'm at 3, and 8, I'm up at 6. And that is y equals 3 times the cubed root of x. I know my h value is going to be 0 because there's no other number inside the radical. Because the radical stops, the cube root stops just above the x, it's not going over the 4. I know this is a k value. And the k value is negative 4. So we're going to take all of these values to the right nothing but down 4. Now we can graph that one. Putting arrows on the ends. So this is y equals 3 cube root of x minus 4. We know our domain in the range for a cubic, or actually cube root, is always all real numbers. In our comparison, we have no reflection. There's no negative in front, so we don't have to talk about it. We have a vertical stretch by factor of 3, and then we have our k value. Translated down 4. Let's do one more. This one here, you might notice the half, so that's going to be the square root. So that means we're going to use the numbers 0, 1, 4, 9, and 16. We're going to do the square root There is no a value, so there's no extra row that I need to do. So that's y equals square root of x. And that value is going to be translated. Our h is negative 3. If it says x plus, that means x minus a negative. So this is a negative 3, and the k value is clearly negative 8. k value is exactly what it looks like. The h value is always the opposite of what it looks like. 
So we're going to go to the left three and down eight. Left three, down eight. Left three, down eight. That would be our final graph. Always good to use a different color for that. And that's y equals the square root, because the denominator is a 2. It's 1 over 2, square root. x plus 3 minus 8. Since my h value is negative 3, our domain is greater than or equal to negative 3. And our range is greater than or equal to negative 8. If you were looking for interval notation, the smaller numbers 3 to infinity and negative 8 is the smallest y value and infinity would be the largest because it's going in an upwards motion. Now the domain and range without a graph. You should still have a good visual of what this would be. We have a reflection, we have a shrink, we have a translation, but a cube root graph is basically going to look like that. It goes forever right and forever left. It doesn't matter how it's moved. So it's all real numbers. It slowly goes up, it slowly goes down. It doesn't matter how it's moved. So it's all real numbers. We have reflection over the x-axis. We have a vertical shrink because the a value is less than 1 by factor of 1 quarter or 0.25 if you want to say and it's translated 8 units left and 5 down Take a look at this one. Just having a visual of what we're thinking. It's going to move to the right one. It's going to open up and go in a downwards motion. Now, essentially, it's going to look something like that. So my domain is my h value. x is greater than or equal to 1. My range is my k value. This is plus nothing, so my k value is 0. So y is less than or equal to 0. It's less than or equal to because I have a reflection. Reflection over x-axis. That's the negative. Vertical stretch. Now, yes, I see it's a fraction, but this is a fraction that's bigger than 1. So it's a stretch by factor of 5 thirds. And it's translated 1 unit right and up and down nothing. Those are the graphs. Here we're going to find the inverses. So to find an inverse, first you write your f of x as a y. I don't like the decimal, so I'm going to use 1 quarter, 1 over 4, to represent 0.25. And then we switch our x and the y 
just the x and the y switch. We subtract 1, so that's x minus 1. Then we'd multiply by the denominator. That gets distributed in. Don't forget your x. Negative 4 times x. This side is still a y, not an x, sorry. There it is. The original was linear. And the inverse was linear. Now, a lot of times, we don't like to write it with y. If it's actually an inverse, we would say f of negative 1 of x. So y equals 125 x cubed plus 4. We're going to switch our x and the y. Subtract the 4. Divide by 125. And then we take the cubed root. Now this is 1 over 125 x. That's a positive, that's a negative, so minus 4 over 125. So now we're going to take the cubed root. So we have the cubed root of 1 over 125 x minus 4 over. Okay, one sec. Let's change this up a bit. Because with the minus, we can't take the cube root of these things. That's not helping us. Sorry. It's going to be more helpful, actually, if we just divide it by 125. Then when we take the cube root to both sides, We can take the cube root of the bottom, we take the cube root of the top. Don't forget your index. So the cube root of the bottom, the cube root of 125 is 5. So we would typically like to write that out in front. So this would be g negative 1 of x. The original family was cubic. The inverse family is cube root. Here we have x squared minus 16. A lot of people get confused by what this domain restriction is doing. Well, we know that x squared is a parabola. Negative 16 tells you that you're going to move it down 16 units. But you're only going to connect the dots that are greater than 0 or greater than or equal to 0. So we have y equals x squared minus 16. We'll switch our x and the y. We'll add the 16. We'll take the square root. Now, when you take the square root, you get plus or minus. But remember, we just wanted x values that were positive. We wanted a domain restriction that was positive. So, in this case, we want a range that is positive. So we're not going to have the negative. So this is going to be h of negative 1 of x equals the square root of x plus 16. So our graph is now going to come across like that. 
as our inverse. Plus 10, plus 10. Square and square. Plus and plus. The second one, notice it's a square root, so we got a square. Here's the common mistake. People distributing through. Very frustrating. Don't distribute it. You have to write it twice. And we have to FOIL this. x times x is x squared. Positive 4x and a positive 4x is 8x. 4 times 4 is 16. Minus the 2 plus the x. We move everything over to the same side. Positive 7, positive 2, zero product property. And when I plug in negative 7, negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3. A square root can't be negative 3. So that's extraneous solution. This is our only answer. Plug in a negative 2, negative 2 plus 4 is 2. 2 minus a negative 2 is 2 plus 2, which is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So that works. Add 2. X minus 3. 2 fifths equals 4. We could treat this as 5 halves. To get rid of those, actually crisscross, but this has an even number in the denominator. That's the scary part. That means you're going to do 4 to the half power, and then you're going to raise it to the fifth power. Well, here's what my concern is. When I take the square root of 4, I did it to both sides of the equal sign, I'm going to get plus or minus 2 to the fifth power. And when I raise that to the fifth power, I'm going to get plus or minus 32. So I'm going to get x minus 3 equals 32, and x minus 3 equals negative 32. Add 3 across to get 35. Add 3 across to get negative 29. Because there's not an x on both sides of the equal sign, I really don't have to worry about an extraneous solution. You plug in 35, you got 35 minus 3 is 32, fifth root of 32 is 2, squared is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2. Negative 29 minus 3 is negative 32, fifth root is negative 2, squared is positive 4, minus 2 is 2. Works out just fine. We're going to subtract 7. Divide it by negative 2. Now a cubed root can equal a negative number. That's no problem. So you get x minus 5 equals negative 64. Add the 5 to get negative 59. If I'm going too fast, of course, pause. I would encourage you to pause anyway. Pause it, work through the problem, see how you did. Minus 10. 
multiply by 6. We're going to raise this to the 2 thirds because that crosses them off to get x. That means 2 thirds. That means we're going to do 2 16 to the 1 third power and then square that. The 1 third power, that means the cube root. The cube root of 2 16 is 6, 6 squared. 36. Divide by negative 5. Cube both sides. Add 18. We got 10. We don't have to worry about extraneous solutions because we don't have x's on both sides. Last two word problems. Write a radical equation that is translated from its parent function left 8 units down 10 units and its inverse is a quadratic. Left 8 units. That means x plus 8. Down 10. It doesn't talk about any reflections. Doesn't talk about any stretching. So there you go. Write a quadratic equation. Uh, down 7 units. Has a vertical shrink. And its domain is all real numbers. A vertical shrink means that we need a number less than 1 as our a value. All real numbers is going to require it to be cubic. And we want it down 7, so the 7 has to be the k value. Good luck.